I would like you to show me how brain cells communicate. In fact, I would like you to, madam. But it's okay. All you need to do is start a Mexican wave. Everyone's going to join in, and it's going to cross the Bloomsbury as quickly and as silently as possible. Are you ready? Go. Nice. Nice. I make that about five seconds. Now, your brain cells do something really similar. But they send their wave along a long, skinny cable called an axon. Now, this is a bit long for one axon, but if you were to unravel all of the wiring that's tangled up in here, you'd get round every single street in London ten times. So, this stage is peanuts. Now, this wave travels because the surface of the axon is covered in tiny little channels, holes that can open and close. Now, as soon as a few of them open up one end, positive particles that are outside the axon pour in, and that makes the inside positive. That shift in charge triggers more channels to open. So now these guys do, and more positive charges go in, and then these guys do, and it rolls all the way along at around about the speed that your wave went. But for a lot of what goes on inside your brain, that isn't nearly fast enough. So luckily, all your most important axons actually look like this. So the string in the middle is the axon, but sections of it are coated in insulation. Now in the gaps where the axon's exposed, that's where the channels are. So when the wave arrives, they open and the positive particles go in. But in the insulated bits, no charge gets in or out and the axon is protected from any interference, which means that in the next gap along, these channels sense that shifting charge all the way from back here. So our wave skips from gap to gap to gap, and now it would cross this stage in a tenth of a second. If your wave worked that way, none of you guys would be involved. Sorry, you're inside a sausage. We go straight from my friend over here to you on that end, madam, and then on to the next one. And that is how these waves travel at literally Formula One speed. Billions of them whizzing around the ten Londons inside your head just so that you can think or dance or listen. All because your brain cells communicate using these cascading, beautifully insulated Mexican brain waves. Very nice, Jonathan. Thank you. Um, for the purpose of three minutes explanation, obviously, it, I think it's a very, very beautifully simple story you told. How much deeper science did you have to skip uh, into, I mean, uh, I don't want to, like, the, like the, the, the quantum cryptography <laughs> question I asked, but I mean, um, well, we know that, for instance, enzymes use um, you know, quantum tunneling to transport electrons very, very quickly. You're using sort of this class classical idea of classical waves being transmitted. Is that enough to explain what goes on in, in, inside axons? I'm not a quantum physicist, so if th th there may, I mean, of course there is a quantum aspect to all of this neuroscience because everything's made up of, of atoms and those forces will have a role. But um, as far as I'm aware, it is possible to explain the conduction of, of what's called an action potential, that wave, using uh, classical explanations because basically it is a long, thin sack of fluid and charge. Uh, and you can explain what happens using a combination of the chemical forces and the electrical forces, which is I tried to kind of give a sense of without using too much jargon. Okay. If I can just take you a little bit deeper, Jonathan, with it. The, the axons that you've talked about provide the, the motorways. They are the connections, the, the pathways. And at the moment, within neuroscience, there is a movement that's focused on the connectome. That's quite simply, if we understand all the connections in the brain, we would understand our identity, consciousness, etc. Do you agree with that? And if you don't, why not? Because it's a simple, if, like if we understand all the connections in the computer, we understand a computer, you understand all the bits in the car, you understand a car, 
Why isn't it the same for the brain, or is it the same for the brain? Well, well if we're going quantum, it is and it isn't. Because, I mean, it's, it, it's, it's really important, because obviously you do understand more about how a car works or a computer works if you understand the way it's wired up. But that's not everything, um, because... Uh, I mean, all the, all the connections aren't the same. Some are weighted more heavily than others. And more importantly, there's a temporal dimension. And one of the reasons that the mechanism of the, the wave traveling is so important is because timing is crucial. I mean, I study auditory neuroscience. And in order to work out where a sound is coming from, your brain compares the time at which a sound arrives at this ear and at that ear, which is a very small interval. So uh, knowing which things, you know, whether the thigh bone's connected to the knee bone is part of the story, but there's a lot else to explore as well. So, so what do you say? I mean, we had last year a, a chap called Sebastian Sung that's just wrote the book Connectome, which re uh, and there's a strong movement around this. What do you say to that community then? Well, what would be the message you would send out to the neuroscience community that really believes in this? Well, I don't think it's not important, and part, part of what I study is long-range inputs from other sensory systems into the auditory system. what would system. you so say to that community? If Sebastian was here tonight, what would you say to him? I'd say I really admire what you do, but it's not, no, the, full no. creepy, creepy. But it's not the full story. Right. Okay. Okay. Well, very briefly. Well, it's, it's okay. It's not really a brief question, actually. Then so edit, you've, edit. you've done molecular biology, history of science, science media center, neuroscience. So how does the, where is the public engagement? Where, where is your career in, with the science and public engagement? And What's brief, going on? A brief bit Briefly. applies to you as well, I'm afraid. In the future, <laughs> yeah. or... Uh, How does it all fit together for you? Well, yeah, I, so I, I love all of the different things that I've done. I've been very lucky to do so many different things. Uh, and in the future, I would really like to spend more of my time doing communicating and slightly less of it at the bench, although I've loved my time. <laughs> I'm coming to the end of my PhD and looking at what I do next. It's a big decision that I have to okay. you make. You chance to say they fit together like a string of sausages. And final, hey. <laughs> fi final question, your favourite Tom Waits song? Oh, uh, good choice. Jockey full of bourbon. Okay, good, fine, fine answer. Jonathan Webb, thank you very much indeed. <laughs>